Hey, would you stand for something or you falling for anything? They gave us nothing, but they took from us many things. Free men in mind, body, soul, I've been a king. Oppressor's worst nightmare, but what if I didn't dream? What? Okay, so it is 2.35. My flight boarded at 2.21. There was a spirit supervisor named Rebecca, a white woman, who determined that my dog, despite his documentation to show that he is a service dog, is her opinion, not a service dog. Um... <laughs> So she refused to let me get on the plane. Um, crazy, it was crazy that literally as we're sitting there, cause you see, like very compliant. Obi's a frequent flyer, he does this. Um, yeah, she said that he's not a service animal and she would not let me get on the flight. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Okay, and then do you can I have the note that she's notated that I'm being denied to get on the flight because she believes my service animal is a emotional support animal? So, well, service animal and I feel okay. I'm not like Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Is there any way to print that off for me to be able to see it on my ticket? I can't. Can I take a picture? Uh, let me ask. I'm okay. Here, so I'm just like, and then I just want to, so all animals aren't on the flights because I didn't see what just happened with him happen to the young lady with her service animal there. Um, they may have submitted the form. I really don't know. She wrote in a paper form just like I did. She had the same ID card as I did. Her dog sat there just like mine did, but I, I'm being the, I'm the one that is being denied on the flight. So how do I like confirm that when I walk away, like the note can't be deleted or it's not gonna go anywhere? I mean, because it's saved in the reservation, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a way to print it. So, so now we're on our way back to the airport because the um, customer service representative that we talked to said that they couldn't find any notes on the account to say that to document what happened which is literally what I asked them at the counter like who's to say that the the note that you just put doesn't just disappear and they assured me and then they spoke with Rebecca to assure me that the note would be there but it is not um, they're saying that they did not have any documentation of me like any confirmation of me providing the completed DOT form, um, which I submitted online and it said confirmed. I didn't take a screenshot of the confirmation page because I always do this, but it did send me like my modified reservation. Um, and you can see like I have service animals selected. Anyways, um, they said they didn't have the completed form, but I gave them the completed form at the front counter. So this is even before TSA. Like, I gave them the completed form, which is because apparently I don't do enough receipts and show people. But anyways, I gave them the completed form. The lady who was up there saw it. I think her name was like Anne Marie. And she was like, oh, your signature looks just like mine. Like I signed mine the same way. Like I was like, oh, we signature twin. So like she definitely saw my signature on the form that was completed that they saw. But now in their system, they're saying that they never saw it. They didn't receive it. Rebecca is saying that she didn't have a completed form. Um, yeah, so the comment's gone. We're going to go back up there and um, have them update their notations. Um, and call customer service and yeah we shall we shall see because my rights have been violated um so the 80 like the department of transportation says that you all should have an official that's on hand that you all can provide to talk to me in person if i believe my disability rights have been violated that there should be yeah i came earlier with my service animal and i had his 
documentation. I have the completed dot form as well as like my ID, his ID, and Rebecca denied us on the flight because she said that she believed he was an emotional support animal and not a service animal. She asked me what service he provided. I told her he provides, um, he reduces hypervigilance through teamwork and she continued to badger me about what that means. What does that look like? If you start hyperventilating, what does he do? Can he, like, is he performing CPR? And it's like, no, I don't require, dis I don't have a disability that requires that service. And she said, well, he's an emotional support animal and I'm not letting you go. I don't. Ha he's not an emotional support animal. He's a service animal. He is a service animal. Yes. I brought the paper. I have the paper. Did she show that to us? Yes. She denied it. Yes. She denied it after I showed her the paper. I have my. Um, Yeah. We, we dropped them back off at home because we were here at 2 o'clock when this happened. And, yeah. It's okay. This one? That's, but it's, you all have it. Like, it's in your hand right now. Yeah, I understand. I just have it. How did you have it when you Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anne Marie and Arlene helped us. So I came back because the note that you see now that says the form wasn't there showed up after we called customer service. And who gave you the paper? I had it when I came here. It's that's crazy. She was very aggressive for no reason. She literally badgered me about what my disability was and what he had to do. She did. Once that one comes through, they forward it to us, to our managers. To her? Yeah. No, our managers. Okay. Spirit that one, they forward it to our managers. Once okay. they receive it, they give it to her, and she has to explain why she denied it. Okay. Okay, but as you see, she's going to say that there was no form presented when there was yeah, a form. I mean, take a picture of this, mm -hmm. and when you file a complaint, send it in together with your complaint that you received. But there's two other women down there that saw that form before she even came here. Yeah. Can you just, I mean, do you see the notes on the account? I mean, I mean it's just a missing POT form, which is this one. But yeah. Wasn't. But do you see, I, Arlene, she put two <coughs> notes on the account. The first one saying that it was presented before boarding. Mm hmm. So if it was presented yeah, it was before boarding, how come? Yeah. You see how it don't make sense? One person said it's not. Okay, thank you. about that official that they said that they're required by law to have speak with you if you feel that your disability rights are in They don't have one. You all don't have one on hand. Because it says, no. you know, according to that, it says y'all required by law to let us speak to them. It says you're required by law for you to let us speak to them. Uh, or whoever right. that position holder is. It just says, Okay. Like that lady was mean to me. And the only reason why the it's crazy because I was in the car with my dad, like 
you know, he was like, how long does it take you to normally go through security? Like, not very long. Like, I never need more than a, a, like, 40 minutes because it's pretty easy getting through with Obi. Like, I always have his form completed. They don't normally need his service ID card because most airlines don't really honor it. Like, it's something nice to have because you can see all of the like additional steps that i've gone through to make sure that you know that obi is a like service animal he's a certified service animal he went through training i I have um proof of his training papers i discussed how his commands were um going to be used for my disabilities with the trainers they had they knew that obi was they were training him as a service animal um And so, like, if you, she asked me how he, what his service is. His service is he reduces hypervigilance through teamwork. But what is that? What does that look like? Teamwork. Mm -hmm. But what specifically, like you saying, if you hyperventilate, then he... No, I'm saying he reduces hypervigilance through teamwork. Well, it seems like he's more of a companion than he is a service animal because what you're describing is an emotional support animal, and we do not honor emotional support animals. But he's not an emotional support animal. He's a service animal, like a psychiatric service animal. And even that, you're prime. Like, you can't, you aren't supposed to inquire about my disabilities. Um... But this old, like, older, prejudiced white woman um, saw me, a black girl, with locks and a pit bull, and is like, no, he's not a service animal. He's an emotional support animal. And I'm, (coughs) like, we don't accept emotional support animals. And I'm like, I don't know what else you want me to do. And it's not it's not my job to explain to you his service. Like, I told you what it is. And if you don't understand it, and you're going to deem in your opinion that he's an emotional support animal, despite me giving you what you need to show that he's a service animal, it's okay. Like, it's, <clears throat> I'm not gonna, I, okay. Just make sure that you document that it's your opinion that, my service animal is not a service animal and you are denying me so then i'm like well can you write put it in right so at this point she walks off goes to the back never sees i never see her again beyond the confrontation that she had with me and like during that a young white woman with and i won't even say that she's white because i don't know her ethnicity like black people can't pass for black people can't pass for white like I've read slave stories that they've said I'm as white as my slave owner. So who who knows what her race is, but she looked Caucasian and she had a golden retriever, which are more vicious, like they're deemed as very vicious dogs. Um, as her, like her service animal, he had the service animal harness. I saw that she had some sort of identification, the same paper as me. Her dog was sitting down, Obi was sitting down. Like, um, but she did not experience the same harassment and like badgering that I experienced. Her, she was in and out. And like, even the the people that were there, they didn't understand why she denied me. And then she, like I asked for her name. Um, they had to get, uh, approval that they could share her name but not last names um and then she had to approve my refund and so she approved a refund but when I just did the math the math wasn't math and like what I got approved for and mind you like at this point I'm having an anxiety attack on the outside it may seem as though I'm cool but like I'm not okay I'm not okay because the fact that I went into this very confident, knowing my rights, because the airport has literally caused me anxiety attacks, especially Las Vegas airport. Like the last time I left Vegas with OB, I had a full blown anxiety attack because they did the most uh, because they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. And then they feel, I guess, like 
they gotta do the most because of the inadequacy of their like experience with service animals that are pit bulls people are not used to seeing pit bulls as a service animal but obi was and i've had him since he was eight weeks and it was very intentional to get him specifically as a breed and in color as a service animal so he's been a service animal since i i got him and so i but i've seen people not know what to do i've never seen a pit bull as a service animal okay well yes they can be service animals but then at this point they have their prejudice about the dog and about me and now it's an issue now it's take the everything off your dog leave him on one side which the trainers train like the service the trainers trained me to do because they were like well if he is a service animal this is something that he has to do these are his commands and this is how he does it he he follows them yes because he's a trained service animal but what you cannot do is and they've done it before is made me not have control over my dog you're not supposed to remove the service animal from the caregiver ever but if i'm having an anxiety attack i was literally on the floor of las vegas airport like this holding obi hyperventilating because they were doing the most and like i didn't know what to do in the moment and like one black like older black tsa lady came up to me she was like don't worry like we gonna take care of you like and, and that was after they held me up for like 20 25 minutes like literally stressing me out because i'm like i don't you want me to leave my dog like you want me to take his his collar like his his training it's a it's a e-collar it's how i can control him when i don't physically have him in in my like on my person but you're telling me to take that off too like literally just leave the dog without nothing nothing like what (laughs) So this time, like now after this traveling and like learning and researching my rights, like what, what rights I have by federal law, like, like my ADA rights, I think is what they call, like I have rights and so I'm a lot more confident traveling as a person with disabilities and as a person of color because I know that I'm experiencing like double prejudice. I'm a double minority. And so now it's like, all right, I know what I'm doing now. So this time I was very proud of myself for not having a full blown meltdown anxiety attack. I was able to like, yeah, like, because I I, I kind of felt confident knowing that I knew what my rights were. Um, I still feel traumatized. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I really do have now a i have anxiety towards traveling with my service animal i have anxiety literally ptsd like the traveling at airports is now traumatic for me because i have experienced this last time with rebecca like and it was like it's one thing to think that you being a uh, stereotype and discriminated against but for this young somewhat like l- caucasian looking like woman to come up with her dog that's like low-key bigger and deep like research golden retrievers are vicious dogs they're vicious dogs and for her to have a easy breezy beautiful cover girl uh in and out through that literally right next to me like that was very humiliating and like it made me feel degraded and inadequate as a as a person like i felt bad for my dog like people discriminate against obi all the time yeah. and you can place it down here let you have certain breeds in but w- as a service animal they, they have, have to, to. yeah, yeah. They have to do that. and so that's why he's he's a service animal because he's a service animal yeah. Oh my gosh, like this was me. I was finally going home after traveling, having a great birthday trip. The Obi is a service animal, so I don't just leave him with a dog sitter. I don't just leave him with whomever. Like he's either with um, his trainers 
or he's with someone that I've trained to be a handler mm -hmm. if I'm not here. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's either with me or in Vegas mm -hmm. with my aunt and my father mm -hmm. who have instructions on Obi. We work together on what to do with Obi. And that's the only reason I'm here. That's the only reason I'm ever here. Okay. Like, girl, I'm sorry. I ain't even mean to like <laughs> soapbox on you. Mm -hmm. Marty McFly, more like Malcolm Expedition. I'm headed to the past with a vengeance on the mission. Don't get it twisted. I'm always down to talk if they gon' listen. If we going off history, then violence maybe a 